Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sabrina and today we're continuing on with Beacon Pines. I'm absolutely certain that Hum, or where other weep, will lead to roughly the same um, ending. The stillness, but let's try this again. He began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. Mm-hmm. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Yes. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. It, this wall may soon come back to normal, she I promise. Up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. Can't hide behind uh can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Since uh, the source, once our, their source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Ignoring Juniper, don't. His final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep. Yeah, it's darkness. still going to be a death. Because we already witnessed this. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, mm -hmm. punctuated with a thunderous thud. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook yep. her to silence. Yep, yep. time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Also very true. Flinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place forever. And yep. so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. Yep. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. Yeah, you think? On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. Lurking behind those eyes. Yep. Like a trap ready to spring. Yep. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. Correct. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. Yes, you should. I just want this all to be over. Of course, I'm sure it will be work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check on Rollo at the Luke Cheery House. Free of, non grasp. of course. Luca? You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come with me with anything. Anything at all. Now we know who you are. Yeah. Okay. She just gave. Hey, Bert. long holler into the woods. 
No, Rolo. I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Okay. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. Uh -huh. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. Oh, the he source. He dropped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined uh -huh. it, and slid it into his pocket. Okay. Keepsake. The voice Weird of keepsake, but okay. spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Also. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Awesome. Luca I found guess. himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Cool, I guess. Wait? For what? Good question. Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. Okay. That's up to you. Up to me? Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Okay, start crying. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Not really. Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angered us. That makes sense. Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. Good, because it makes very little sense to me. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A commanding voice rumbled from below. Who? Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Who was it? Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Who are you? Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Oh. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. Joseph. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh. Rolo. He aged. The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. The thing that aged his mom aged Rolo as well. Nice try, but you aren't Rolo. You're too old to be Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles. It's me. Luca's jaw dropped. Yeah, I would too. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo. Definitely looks like Rolo. Only bigger, older, changed.
Yeah, I'd like to know. That too. Okay. Okay. Threw a bag over my head. Okay. They took my hands all big. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Okay. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet too? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. Yeah, I would too. His hands shot up to his face. Yes, you grew. Ew. Ew. I see. Smash to open my cage. Yeah, thank you. You have the same response to me. Yeah. Um, okay. It seems all dangerous. Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. Take them all on. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. <laughs> Who the heck are you? That's Bex. Oh yeah, they haven't met in this timeline yet. No, this is my buddy Rollo. One the same. Seems a little old. It's a recent development. I'm sorry, you're one that just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking you the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Uh, silly little treehouse? It's breaking. This isn't so secret. I could hear your racket from a mile away. Not really real. Okay. She yeah. shot a nervous corner. His, her mom, mom, isn't it? Beck's eyes narrowed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Great A creep. I agree. Well, we now know he's an actor. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Other people seem to have a cover for me. I love it. She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. Okay. Town doesn't suck. Second, you need. Yeah. 
Okay. So, yeah. Basically off her. If he is away, basically, they're going to off her mom. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. body in the warehouse that would make sense okay two days Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket okay okay Rollo started to wiggle with excitement we're heisting. All right. Chapter six. The heist. They spent the Ooh. night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. I will, oh, sorry. I'm to them. There's a really easy it way of doing no it. Small feet. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There were, the festival was to begin in one day. And they Let's each go. had their assignments. Gonna to talk to Roxy cordially. Okay. No, it's not. He waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. Oh, she will. Okay. I'll go see Jeff and Iggy. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence. And sleepy yet. confidence. Ugh. Okay. Let's go. Where's Jeff? I hate 
it's a strong word. I didn't say it was the wrong word. Um, Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. See, kids, all right. The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Good reason to risk my own hide. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Oh, we have four options. Jeff's brow perked up. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. <laughs> a good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. Okay. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Okay. I mean, we got- we enlisted his help. Iggy raised an eyebrow suspiciously. Yeah, yeah. Luca knew they he tried again. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. Oh my god. Okay. Shit. Iggy considered the point. Yeah. Press, so am I. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. With a quick nod, Luca was off. Awesome. Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. Never expected this day to come. How wonderful. You spoke! Tish, you spoke! Chapter 7. All right, so I'm going to leave that here for this episode. We're going to continue on with chapter seven. I feel like we're having traction. I feel like this might be end game. Here's hoping. I do want to thank y'all so much for watching. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.